My name is Michael Rainsborough and I'm the head of the Department of War Studies. This is a very brief introduction to war studies and I begin by saying that the department was formed in 1962. The original sort of founder of the department was someone called um, Sir Michael Howard. I don't know if any of you have um, come across his name. He's a very venerable military historian and he really conceived the vision of the department as a very broad-based um, a uh, very broad-based study of war. War is a very complex idea. It touches on the, the entire facet of the human condition. And so there are many, many different ways of actually studying it. And consequently, what Michael Howard emphasised is that uh, there's no single way of actually approaching uh, war. Therefore, we take a very multidisciplinary approach to the study of war. So if you were to become a student here, you would actually be introduced to uh, a whole range of uh, ways of looking at the idea and concepts um, of war. And as you can see here, there are many, many different ways of analysing war. You can look at it from a historical point of view, you can take a philosophical point of view, you can look at it through the lenses of all sorts of different disciplinary perspectives, sociology, philosophy, cultural approaches, art, literature, and so on and so on. When I began as a student here, and I did my master's degree here and my PhD here, there wasn't a, a bachelor's degree to actually take when I was around back in the last century. It was a very small department, and we only had about five permanent members of staff. Today, we're pushing over 120, and that's, that's sort of permanent members of staff. We're the only university department in the world devoted to the complexities of the study of conflict and security. And because we have now grown so well over the last half decade or so, we are able to sort of teach and live up to this idea of a multidisciplinary approach to studying war. When we first started off, we were very much um, only able really to sort of look at the department through the lens of sort of history and a bit of political studies. But now we are so broad based, we actually are able to, um, you know, really fulfill our sort of uh, mandate, the mandate of uh, Michael Howard. So as I say, we, we have a very broad conception of war studies and we try to, in the BA degree, we try to look at a number of ways of how you can approach a systematic study of war. So we look at, for example, the things like the causes, the conduct and consequences of, of conflict and its implications for society as a whole. Here I would accentuate three key attributes that I think defines us as a department. First of all, I would emphasize this notion of knowledge in the service of society. You know, you might have a sense that academics, they usually like to live in their ivory towers. They're, they're very comfortable with um, books and just knowledge for the sake of it, and that's all fine. But we in war studies, we try explicitly to interface with the uh, so-called sort of real world. We try to get out there, we try to, um, if we, if we conduct research, we try to conduct research about real problems out there. So um, we have people who interface very strongly with policy, with government, with NGO sectors, um, in all sorts of realms. And the, the important thing to stress here is that, they, that uh, we then bring back um, that knowledge into the classroom. So it's not just studying theory, um, or arcane subjects for the sake of them. We try to relate it back to existing problems in the real world. Secondly, I would emphasize that we are very fortunate to be located in London, a financial, economic, and political powerhouse. And of course, we can take advantage of all of the um, attributes and the advantages that London, uh, somewhere like London, has to offer in terms of think tanks, institutes, uh, libraries, the fact that there's a throughput of um, very significant people through London which we can um, uh, gather and uh, we can bring them in and we can, um, uh, we can become, uh, as I've emphasised there, an intellectual hub. You know? So with, um, in addition to your orthodox learning, there are many, many other sort of ways that you can enhance and enrich your studies through all sorts of events which rotate around the Department of War Studies. And so we've had very important speakers um, in the past, the uh, former heads of the United Nations, um, 
uh, American defense secretaries, um, just to name two high, uh, prominent examples, but we have a lot more than that. Visiting academics, policymakers, uh, people, uh, people who actually have something interesting to say. And thirdly, what makes us what we are is our students. You know, a university department is nothing without its students. Consequently, what we find as teachers is that uh, what makes being in war studies so wonderful from our point of view is that we are engaging with some of the really sort of young, keen minds who want to study war and its various associated dimensions. War studies is not your conventional academic subject. You know? Uh, people who come to the department, they do so because they have explicitly, very often, sought us out because they see that we are unusual, we have something interesting to offer. And consequently, you will find that you'll be, as students, that you will be mingling with a very keen peer group. And that in itself you know, will be one of the most memorable um, things that I'm sure many of you will take away from uh, your time here. Just to very quickly go through the structure of our War Studies uh, degree. In addition to this, just let me point out, we have um, a whole range of master's um, subjects as well, but we don't need to go into those. Just going to single out our bachelor's degrees. So we run two significant um, undergraduate degrees, the BA in War Studies and the BA in International Relations. As you can see here, you can take a mix of joint honours degrees as well, BA in War Studies and History, BA in War Studies and Philosophy, and uh, you can also do a History and International Relations undergraduate degree. Now just let me focus on the straight BA in War Studies for a moment. In year one, just to give you a, a um, sort of rundown of what, what we expect you to undertake as you go through your War Studies degree. If you're doing the straight BA War Studies um, degree, you are required to do five modules. All of them are compulsory. So the causes of war, you know, why war arises, conduct of war, you know, how you sort of um, you know, think about uh, going about conducting war, the experience of war, what, what people have thought about war and their relationship to understanding war. We also have a module on contemporary security issues and we also have a, another course called the Art of War Studies which is a more focused course which is intended to really sort of inculcate you into how to sort of think um, in a rigorous manner, how you relate to um, studying text, how you can uh, write effective essays, and so on. Progressing into year two, again, you know, just stressing this is if you are doing the single honours war studies degree, you will take one compulsory module, which is war in the 20th century, and you will then take three 30 credit optional modules. Here's just a, an indicative list. You know, we have a lot more than that, all right? But you know, that's just a sort of, um, just a sort of indicator of um, what is available for you to choose from in terms of your option modules. I should just add here that we do have an East Asian pathway module where you can specialize in uh, the study of uh, the security and politics of Asia. And that also comes with a language module, um, which you, uh, you can elect to take chi uh, Mandarin or Japanese. So that is available. Year three, we have two compulsory modules. One is a 10,000 word dissertation. The other is a module, State, Society and Strategy. And again, you take two 30 credit option modules. Again, just an indicative indication here of what is available. So how do we go about sort of studying war? And uh, how do we generally um, approach the educational offering? Well. You will have a mix of learning environments. So you'll have people like me giving lectures, stand-up lectures, introducing you to uh, various topics. And this will usually be followed by seminar sessions. So that is much more smaller group um, sessions where you're broken down into individual groups and you will um, discuss in greater detail the various sort of topics that you will be reviewing. And I think most people um, tend to think that the lectures are great and that uh, you know, you, they will introduce you to the, to the basic themes, but in terms of actually developing your independent critical faculties and really digging into the subjects, a lot of your most um, sort of stimulating learning will come through these sort of smaller seminar discussions. 
So as a consequence of that, you'll find that a lot of your learning, the development of your independent critical faculties, will be very much come from a sort of student-driven point of view in terms of, you know, you will be the ones who will be engaging with material. You're very much encouraged to think for yourself and to develop your arguments and hone them and um, trying, to, trying to refine your ideas. You know, it's not about just passively receiving information. Consequently, we also accentuate very diverse assessment patterns. So it's not just the standard end of year examination, but we have things like essay based work, group based work, um, sometimes uh, multiple choice tests, that kind of thing. But we try to make our assessment pattern as diverse as possible to give people a sort of chance to sort of flourish and to, ex to kind of expand their horizons in terms of developing their knowledge and having that tested in a variety of different different ways. Um, and I think it all culminates, I would suggest, in the third year with your dissertation project, which is this 10,000 word research project, which is really meant to be the pinnacle that you reach in terms of developing your independent critical um, faculties, largely in pursuit of a subject that you, that you find really interesting in the field. And we're very broad, we're very receptive to any kind of topic which fits in with, uh, with the general broad field of uh, war studies. And you will be guided through that um, experience by um, supervisors in the department. We offer very close uh, uh, interactions with uh, members of, permanent members of staff. We operate a personal tutor system, so every student is allocated a member of staff who will function as your pastoral tutor, you know, who you can go and talk to and discuss things with issues, ideas, maybe even um, you know, if you have um, problems that you wish to bring to our attention and so on. Also, with your teachers, they will maintain regular office hours. So again, you can discuss your coursework and your progression with them. You also have various mechanisms such as the staff student liaison committee where you can feed back your thoughts about your learning experience. And of course, you will also meet staff throughout your time here and not least through the numerous number of events that we have where you will be able to interact. Going into your second year, for those who are interested, there are a range of international options for those of you who might, might wish to think about doing study abroad. The study abroad office can tell you more about that, but again, we just, here's just an indicative list of a number of countries and their associated universities where you can undertake to do um, second year studies if that is something that appeals to you. We all very much emphasise employability these days in higher education. King's College has a very good employability rate in terms of its graduates going on to, going on to employment. War studies is no different. There's a very good career service available right across the college. We also, within the, de in the department, have a dedicated careers liaison officer if you want to um, go and discuss your future ideas with them. We have a growing emphasis on internships for people who are interested, lots of career oriented events, and there's also King's Career Connect, which is a dedicated portal related to careers, which all students have access to. So in a nutshell, that is what the department is uh, all about. Um, I hope I've given you at least just a thumbnail sketch of um, who we are and what we do. Thank you for your attention. I hope you have a very successful day. Thank you.